See what happens when you get old, y'all. Your pill alarm. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't consider myself old, but I have to remind myself to take them in the morning. Yeah. I have... What are you taking? Oh, I mean, it's just a daily medication for, you know, whatever. But yeah, if I forget, and the whole world is, comes to an end. Yeah. You know, things yeah. like the apocalypse will happen, right? Yeah, I just started <laughs> taking the gl glucosamine for my joints. Not that kind of joint, no. For my <laughs> joints. Yeah. Glucosamine, it's supposed to help. Oh. So has it helped with your, because um, I've seen that on your Instagram, you tend to like to repaint some walls in your neighborhood when there is the not beautiful graffiti? Yes, that's true. So how frequently does this happen? Well, you know, I used to be a house painter and I have, and I used to do like, decorative painting and faux finishes and stenciling and stuff for people in coffee shops and stuff because I'm an artist as well as an actor and I had all this paint I got all this leftover paint you know and so people would come and tag somebody's fence you know in my neighborhood and I just I would have the color I'd mix I'd be able to mix the right color to you know patch it up and just so it was like my little random act of kindness I just kind of run over and paint my neighbor's you know graffiti off his fence or whatever and then I just started, it just kind of started snowball and um, I just started doing it around town when I'd see some really ugly tag on a beautiful whatever, you know, I'd just go fix it. Um, anyway, it's not very interesting, but. I find it interesting. Oh, thanks. Because it's just something that you're doing out of your own kindness. Yeah. And it's not. But you know, I, I, got a lot of, I got a lot of crap from some like real graffiti artists. You know, people that do beautiful, really awesome graffiti. They're like, t on Instagram, you know, graffiti is an actual art form, man. And they were giving me all this crap. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm trying to save the good graffiti. So I made a point of saying, look, this is the crappy stuff that I'm going to paint over. I would never touch the good stuff. And then I started to put a couple of really nice um, uh, photographs of beautiful graffiti that I love. Because, you know. Somebody, it's a beautiful art form. I, I love it. I just don't like the, you know, when they're amateurs and they're just messing around and being vulgar. You know, that's not cool. Anyway, you did your research. Well, I do follow you on Instagram, and I have for years. So <laughs> I like it's, Instagram. It's not doing research. It's just watching yeah, your yeah. feeds and watching your different stories, yeah, and yeah, photos yeah. of your cats. I don't do a lot of, but I don't do a lot of Z Nation stuff on Instagram. I just feel it's kind of embarrassing. I don't want to. I don't know. Well, I enjoy what you put on Instagram because it's, I think there was a recent one about um, being intentional and there's like a, a heart rock. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> I, got, I, was, I got profiled. Uh, you know, it was one morning I was, I was going down to Lincoln Park and I do my walking, you know, my power walking. And I'm saying good morning to everybody, you know, morning, morning, like nobody's saying good morning. Like, I'm like, what's wrong with people? And I thought, I'm getting profiled. You know, people are like thinking, oh, he's a creepy druggie, whatever, some creep dude. So, um, and then just as I was starting to feel bad about myself, like, man, maybe I should cut my hair and clean up my act, you know? Then I look down and I see a, uh, a rock with a heart on it. Now, the, I didn't know that that was a thing. That a lot of kids, I guess they do that at school. They paint hearts and they put them everywhere. And I didn't know that heart rocks were a thing. I thought it was so special. I found a, I found a rock with a heart on it. So, I don't know, it made me feel better. And so I posted about it. That's the stupid stuff I post, yeah. I was having a really difficult day at work, and I saw that story, and it made me smile. So really? It did. Good. It impacted me. Mission accomplished. So, I mean, it's even if, but it's showing you as a person, uh, and not just you as a character. Yeah. Like, it's showing more of you, yeah. and I really enjoy that side, that you're Thank willing you. to show that part of you. Yeah. It made me feel better, too. Yeah. yeah. I was feeling like a creepy guy. Maybe I shouldn't talk to people, you know? Speaking of talking to people, if you guys have questions. Yeah, give me all your Z Nation questions. Yeah. I'll take any kind of questions. You don't have to be even Z Nation related. What's the craziest thing you did? Dude, are there kids here? Yeah. We got children in the room? No, I sent um, my nephew off with the Well, it wasn't crazy, but I did get busted at the Kiss concert in 1976. Yeah, I was with my friend Kerry Conversano. He was in it, driving in his Ford Falcon. And he decided it would be a really cool idea to park away from all the other people in the in the parking lot. And so we're getting high and the cars, just, all the windows are rolled up, you know. So it's just, it's like that episode of the Nation where it's totally full of uh, smoke. And um, and then here comes the cop, just 
just, it comes right up behind us. And uh, so we get out of the car and, and I just always remember this image of my friend Kerry Conversano because he had a big afro. And I just remember him just being totally stoned and the, the smoke simmering out of his afro. <laughs> While well, he's trying to explain to the policeman why he's parked way over here. Yeah, I'm not a big pothead, I swear I'm not, but I was in those days. Yeah. Was that before you joined the military? Yes. Okay, so military maybe helped. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I got my girlfriend pregnant in high school and got married in, at 17. And so that changed my life significantly. And then I, I had a scholarship to go to Transylvania University in Kentucky and major in theater set design and, and um, you know, art and everything. So I joined the army, so I could, you know, that didn't, the, uh, the army lasted longer than the marriage. <laughs> but, um, yeah. That was, a, that was a crazy thing that I did. I got my girlfriend pregnant at 17. So we graduated together um, right behind each other, all three of us. Yeah, and then she got, she got uh, transferred into my home room. So it was like, Mr. and Mrs. Hodgkinson, present. You know I mean? <laughs> Embarrassing. Yeah. She's crazy now. She's, yeah, I don't, she has no relationship with either of the kids. It's really sad, actually. She kind of went off the deep end and really sad. You know, crazy, yeah. It's, you know, the opioid, the opioid crisis, man. She got into that, you know, started with the pain medication and then she just got addicted and then she just went downhill. So that's really sad. I mean, that's some serious, that's some serious stuff going on, you know. Anyway, that's pretty crazy. There's a couple of examples of crazy. I could go on, believe me. There's more crazy where that came from. <laughs> well, I grew up in Florida. I usually don't claim that, but I'm, gonna t I'm just saying. Um, but I did. I grew <laughs> oh, good. No, no. But yeah, I grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah, and I was a, a professional soda jerk my all through school. I worked at Carvel. Anybody know Carvel ice cream? Anybody from the east, northeast? It's a very popular ice cream store in the northeast. Anyway, I was a professional soda jerk all through high school. That wasn't too crazy, though. <laughs> yes? Did you ever get mistaken for David Letterman or Santa Claus? Santa Claus, not David Letterman. <laughs> Although he did grow up that big-ass beard, didn't he? He looks, you know, and I saw his beard, I'm like, God, man, what? I should shave my beard. <laughs> that does not look that good. I don't know what it is. I just really feel like I want to keep it, you know? And, um, I, I guess I'm just holding out hope that somebody will give me a spinoff <laughs> someday and I'll need to grow it. Because you know, the minute I shave the shit off, I'm going to get up. They're going to need a homeless guy for a, a new TV show. <laughs> or they're going to get, you know, you know, that's, the, that's when you get the audition for the, you know, the crazy hippie dude. Oh, I just shaved my beard. I can't do it. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. And it's it's embarrassing. It's not, this is not good. This is not working. But I, I just keep it just because you never know. I mean, it's easier to cut it off than it is to grow it back, you know. So I don't care. I already got a wife. I don't need. Why do I care? I don't need to look good. I'm not like Murphy. Murphy's always trying to look good. You know, anybody know Murph, Murphy from the show? Yeah. He's just like that. I swear. He's just like that. He's a real fashionista. He's always trying to keep it together and look good. And, Real slight, you know, stylish and everything. <laughs> I'm just the opposite, so. Anyway. What I liked about your overall, your story of you is that even though you wanted to go to set design and theater, you still ended up doing theater here in Seattle for I a did, couple yeah. years. It was hard. Before you did. It was a hard time to break into, let me tell you. Because I've been to, involved in a lot of theater communities. Because I, my first theater community was in Fayetteville, North Carolina. When I was in the Army, actually, was an actor in the Army, which is crazy. But we, I discovered uh, the Fort Bragg Playhouse in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And it was a semi-professional theater. And I got to do all these great plays with, like, uh, professionals, you know, from New York. Because the director had all these connections in New York. And um, so that was kind of my training, you know, because I didn't get to go to college to, do, to study theater there. But I learned from all these professional actors that I got to work with. And so when I left that uh, community there, I moved to, oh gosh, where, then I moved to California. I had child support payments, so I had to join the Coast Guard. <laughs> I got out for like a, two years. I got out of the Army, thought I was going to, I went to New York, thought I was going to be a big famous actor and really didn't do 
much. I, I was a uh, Manny for Lucy Arnaz. That was my claim to fame in New York. I babysat her kids. Or, or Lucille Ball's grandkids, I babysat them. They were brats, I'm telling you right now. They were little brats, but um, it was a cool job. You know, Lucy Arnaz was cool. Um, then I said, I got, I got a, you know, I got child support payments. I got to get back in the military because this is, you know, this isn't cutting it. So I joined the Coast Guard and ended up in Long Beach, California. And then that was another theater community that I got involved with. Started doing lots of plays. That's where I met my wife. And then, so anyway, I've been involved in several different theater communities. Then we moved to New Orleans, and that was a whole other chapter of my life, doing theater and art, painting, and everything. And and. But when we moved to Seattle, you know, Seattle is a, is a pretty um, big theater town for professional theater, you know. It's not just rinky-dink, it's like professional theater. So it took a while to kind of break into the to this local theater scene because they like to use their regular guys that they use over and over, local boys, you know. But it was cool. I finally broke in, did some really good plays at the Seattle Repertory Theater. And then... Um, and then this audition came up for Z Nation, and it's like, uh, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna cast me in a, a lead character on a zombie show, right? So we all, everybody, all my theater friends, we all auditioned anyway. You know, just thinking, what the hell? Maybe we'll get to be on the show and have a line, or get to be the, just a small part and have a couple lines. Because I had done a couple things, and I did. I was on Grimm, and I was on Leverage, which they film in Portland. So I was able to get a couple little TV things, you know. And then I got cast. I couldn't believe it. It's really crazy. And uh, we shot uh, all five seasons in Spokane, Washington. So I kind of had to live there for through the summers, for five summers. <laughs> but, you know, Spokane is so interesting because there's so many different terrain, so much different terrain. So, it, like, we do one episode in the cornfields, pretending we're in Iowa. Or then we do it in the, the desert area out there, pretending we're in another part of the country, you know. So we're able to really cover a lot of ground in that one region. So it's cool. I don't know what the question was. Was there a question there? <laughs> Sorry, went off on a tangent. The one thing, I mean, I knew that Z Nation was filmed here in the state. Uh, I know one of the um, actresses from the show, so I followed it from the beginning. And Sarah Coates submitted a question for you. Do you love Sarah Coates? Sarah Coates has a question for me? Sarah Coates has a question I for you. I love Sarah Coates. Sarah Coates was a uh, pie girl. Anybody remember pie girl? Yeah. Murphy is having sex with her in the tent. Yeah. And I go and said, hey, hey, break it up. And, he's, and Doc's like, where'd you get a cigarette? I don't even care about them they're having sex. And where'd they you had get a, a cigarette? And they had the zombie that baby. Was a great moment. That was fun. I think that was an ad lib, yeah. actually. We, me and Murphy ad libbed our butt off in that show. And they just let us go. They didn't even care. Just, that's funny. Keep it in. Keep it in, you know? It was really good. I'm going to record this for Sarah's sake. Oh, my God, really? Yes. How about that? No, no. Well, I mean, it's my perspective. I don't like this. Oh, wait, where's Ronnie? Is Ronnie here? Good? My beard's good? Okay, what's the question? Is this going to be on Instagram and everything? No, it's not going to be Instagram. She'll put it on Instagram. Well, I can I can just send it through Okay, don't put me on the spot. Don't embarrass me. That's why I'm giving you a heads up. Okay, okay, okay. Because it's for Sarah and she... Okay, I got grandchildren out there. I can't be embarrassing myself in front of a grandchildren. All right. This is why I was keeping the question secret, because it was from Sarah. Um, this is not going to be good. This is not. I see this coming. I know this. You have you have authority and permission to veto it afterwards. Okay, good. Yes, yes, I do. You know. Okay. So her question is, why is Pie Girl your favorite character, and how much do you miss Sarah Coates? Well, actually, Sarah, thank you for that question. And my actual my favorite characters on C Nation, it was a tie between Pie Girl and Nana. So you're both my favorite just because you're both so sweet and so authentic, and I adore you both. Thanks for the question, Sarah. I love you, miss you. Okay, that was acceptable. <laughs> I'm just gonna send her Do we love name. Nana? <laughs> Nan anybody remember Nana? She's going through some hard times right now. She's got cancer and she's fighting it, and God bless her, Aww. she's the coolest. I really wanted a scene with her because you know she always had that pipe so I think in season five, I finally got to meet uh, Nana because she always filmed different than me. You know, we always had separate film days. So I finally got to, you know, be in a scene with Nana. And so I threw this ad lib and they kept it. She was up on the ladder. I don't know if anybody remembers, but I come in there and um, as we were filing out, she was up on the ladder. I says, hey, Nana, I got something for your pipe for later, a little something for later. And she just smiled, you know, because they wouldn't let her talk. They... She didn't have any lines. That's the, kind of the cool thing about Nana, you know, she never spoke. 
And I think they got away with that because you know they, they paid her as an extra. Because if you speak, you gotta pay him more money. But it was better that she didn't talk. She was just, it made her just more mysterious and cool, you know? I love that character. And of course, Pie Girl is just funny. She's, Sarah Coase is just, I mean, that girl, she should be working all the time. That girl's so funny. That was cool, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what curveball you're expecting from me. <laughs> That's so funny, she turned it right on herself though. Why do you like a Pie Girl so much? Why am I your favorite character? Such a typical actress. I can Why do you love me so much? Please. Why am I your favorite? I do love her though. She's great. I was hoping some of you guys had some questions too about the show or Russell himself or. Yes. Um, Big Fish. Um, Big Fish. Great cast. Great cast. Well, let me tell you, that was the real uh, first, that was like one of my first things that what, what, that made me think, well, maybe I should do TV and film, because I was just theater. Well, I was a big theater snob. I didn't, I thought TV and film, please, I'm a theater, I'm a theater actor, you know. <laughs> but then um, there was this audition for uh, Tim Burton's Big Fish, and I was tiling, um, I was tiling my kitchen, and I had, I was sweaty, I was living in New Orleans, I was just hot, it was hot. I was dripping with sweat, had grout all over my clothes, and a ripped up smelly t-shirt, and my wife said, Russell, you have this audition. You forgot to, you forgot you have the audition for the timber. And I'm like, oh shit, no, no. So I didn't even try to change or clean up or anything. I just went in there with, with my clean headshot resume looking like shit. And, and, I, and I gave him that, and he loved me. He was like, oh, everybody else is in the, in the, everybody else there, all the other guys that were auditioning for this part were all cleaned up, you know, and buttoned up, ready to meet Tim Burton. I'm just like dripping, sweaty, and winded. <laughs> He said, yeah, dude, I like you. You know, so he gave me that part as the farmer. I had, actually had more than one line, but um, they cut it down to just that one line. But I tell you, that, that, um, that credit opened some doors for me because, you know, you put Big Fish Tim Burton on top of your resume, nobody knows that you didn't have a shit, you had a little shitty part. They don't know that you were just, you know, the character is actually called Some Farmer, like Some, some Farmer, but I like to think of it as, some farmer. <laughs> You're like Charlotte Webb, some pig. That's some. So anyway, <laughs> but then I went to the to the theater to see it, and bam, my head covered the whole screen. It was a big close up on my head. So it was cool. <laughs> it's like wow, look at me. And then, so anyway, but then you come into town, and nobody knows you're an actor, but you you hand them your resume, and they say, oh, ooh, Tim Burton, and Big Fish. That opened some doors for me. It really did. I'm very grateful. I got to hang out with uh, Ewan McGregor all day. I just had the one day. He was su super cool though, really cool guy. What's that? Yeah, yeah he was. And, and I got to see Tim Burton in action. You know, he's just crazy and wild, you know. Who? No, I don't even know who that is. He's a composer. It's, it's the composer of the film. Oh no, yeah, no. But wasn't it a great movie? I love that movie. Yeah, yeah, mine too. That was so really cool. We have a cool. question here in the center yeah. and then the Hey, video. I remember you. Oh, thanks, Karen. So, Mike, I have two questions. One is, have you been to Disneyland? That's like my favorite. Vacation spot. Is that an inspired you to become an actor? I've been to Disney. Well, I have been to Disneyland, but you know, I grew up in Florida, so I went to Disney World. And when I was like 16, going to Disney World, we would get on the bus, me and my friends, and we, we, they used to have these uh, rolling papers that were all different flavors. Anybody from the 70s here that was a weed smoker in the 70s? Remember they had the banana, mint, strawberry, all the different flavors of rolling papers? So we would roll just a bunch of joints and bring to Disney World and we'd smoke on the tram, you know, the, the, the big thing that we'd smoke in the haunted house. <laughs> I don't know, we were just stupid, man, we were stupid. <laughs> And uh, so yeah, I, I've been to Disney World, and then when I got married in California, in Long Beach, California, my wife took me to Disneyland. And it's a different scale, it's just everything's a little bit smaller. And it was quaint, I, I think I, I, I kind of like Disneyland better than Disney World, just because it's more, I don't know, it's cooler. And the other question was, when did I start acting? Um, you know, my, my, I was waiting for my friend Tammy Karras to get out of, school, I was going to walk her home. She was just my friend. We lived pretty much in the same neighborhood. But she was auditioning to be a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz. This was seventh grade. 
So I was sitting in the hall waiting for her to do the stupid audition, and the, the drama teacher came out and said, do you mind reading for some of the male parts? Because there's not enough boys here, and we don't have enough people to read the parts. So I'm like, I guess, sure. So I went in and I read for the scarecrow and lion or something, whatever. And so she offered me the part of the scarecrow. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll do it. And so I did it and it was fun. I like the whole, the thing about theater is you, you, um, you know, you start out auditioning, you get the part, whatever, and then you, you just, I like the whole process of it, you know? Suddenly they're, you're, they're building the set and then you're trying on your costumes and it builds and builds and you, you're blocking and then you memorize it, you're having your run-throughs, your dress rehearsals leading up to opening night and then the people are out there and you're nervous and you do it and it, it's just so exhilarating, man. Theater, theater is where it's at. If you're an actor and you want to you be an actor, go do theater. Go do community theater. I did so much theater for free that I never got a dime. And th but that's where you learn, you know? That's, that's where you learn your craft and, um, you know, you screw up and you see what happens, you know? And maybe your actor can, your friend can pull you out of it. You maybe you forgot your line, but you get, you're working with your actors and you get through it, you know? And you just, I can't explain it very good, but it's a thrill. It, and I love the theater and I hope it comes back. I mean, with COVID and everything, I mean, I don't know if I'll ever get to do a play again, but that would be my hope that I get to do more of that because that's really what it's all about. Yeah. I think you had a question. Uh, yeah, um, in Z Nation, were there any parts that were taken forever? Like had so many bloopers, you had to keep redoing? Parts, what do you mean that took forever? Like uh, the scenes, like was there a part that was too hard or took a while to... Oh, you mean like we'd have to do it over and over and over? Yeah, it was a um, lot of bloopers. You know, we were on a really tight schedule. We were, we were putting together a, an episode a week which is pretty unheard of, you know, like five days and we'd, we'd knock out an episode. So, um, you know, they, we didn't have a lot of time to play, you know? So it was pretty fast and furious. So, so I would say, no, we just did it, you know? You, oh. you show up, know your line, hit your mark, move it on. Sometimes you say, can I try that again? I have a better line, move it on. <laughs> right. So then, then you learn to just give the line you want to read. Because a lot of times I'm like, I'm not saying that. Doc, Doc would never say that. He would never say it like that. So I would just say it my own way. Say it the way that I want to say it, you know? And, and then they say, oh, that's not, the, that's not what was written. Oh, oh, sorry. And then, then you have to do one the way they wrote it. But you've already got your good one in the bag, you see. Yeah. And they always used my reading because it was always more natural and it sounded better, you know? Oh. Sometimes the, the writers, you got like a dozen writers that are writing for all these different characters. Like I remember them saying, um, they gave me a line that was like, you know, this reminds me of back in my college days. I'm like, whoa, 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 that did not go to college. <laughs> yeah. Don't make me a college. No, I did not go to, you know, anyway. Stuff that didn't ring true to your character, you know? Yeah. You gotta, we were really protective of our characters and we didn't want to say or do anything that would be, um, you know, out of, out of character for your, what you're doing. This started to make me into this like real druggy, and I said, you know, could we just back up with the drugs a little bit? Because, you know, I got young kids that are fans of the show, not real young, but, you know, teenagers that kind of look up to Doc. They, they like the relationship that Doc has with 10K, and they'll, they'll message me on Instagram and say, you know, I'm having a lot of issues at school, and what do you think I should do? You know, it's really cool, and I get to give advice to these young kids that look up to Doc, you know? So I didn't want to be this big old druggy, so they were cool and kind of backed off on the drug use <laughs> a little bit. Oh. After seaweed, <laughs> which was my idea, by the way. I know I've told you some, some of you that already, but yeah, I totally went to the to the writers and I said, uh, "What if what if we uh, some of this weed we grew using dead zombies in the compost, and when we grew the weed out of it, it we called it seaweed." And they're like, oh, hell yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> so that that just took off, man. That, that just became a whole thing. You know, people said, you should like go to the pot stores and like get a strain. And there, there actually was a strain a friend of mine made. It was Granddaddy Purple mixed with um, uh, Heron, John, I oh, forget the name of it. But it's two, two strains mixed together and they were gonna call it Z-Weed. But then the producers, uh, they have a patent on the name. So we, I don't think we could get away with it. Anyway. But, but you know, it's a, it's a legalized, you know, marijuana is legalized here in Washington State. So I didn't feel like that was any big drug, you know, thing that's going to stick with me forever. <laughs> right? It's just, 
It's good for a lot of things, you know? Anyway. But I don't know if I answered your question, but thanks for that question. Yeah. <laughs> we have a question over here in the center. Sorry? No. Yeah, hey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I first auditioned for Z Nation, I was like, there's something I love. I wonder, I'm, I'm going to IMDB them and see, you know, kind of, what kind of work they do. And I saw Sharknado, I'm like, oh my God, my career is over. <laughs> this is it for me. <laughs> I will never work again. <laughs> but then, you know, people love Sharknado. I had no idea. I thought it was just the stupidest shit I ever saw. Oh my God, oh my God, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And then come to find out that I'm in Sharknado 5. <laughs> it was such a hit. You know, dude, number five, they let me play Doc. But my um, my wife apparently was, uh, who's the famous model? Uh, Christy Brinkley? Not her, uh, the other one. Anyway, it was like, when they told me that that, that was my wife, this like famous model, I'm like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> it was like a Christy Brinkley type, but it wasn't her. Uh, I forget. Who? No, no, no. She wasn't a model. This was like a supermodel, a, a well-named supermodel. Cindy Crawford? No. I don't know. Cindy Crawford. I forget who it was. If anybody wants to look it up, it's uh, Sharknado, season five, and whoever the supermodel was, that was supposed to be my wife. <laughs> What's that? Did you like it? Yeah. I got to hang out with Margaret Cho in the dressing room. She was cool. She was really funny. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah, I totally was. I think I, I think I got killed. I got sucked into the tornado, too, or something. Or the hurricane, or whatever it was. <laughs> Kalita did, uh, the gal who played um, Warren in, our, in Z Nation, she got to, she did, I think, Sharknado 4, or one of those. She played uh, Lieutenant Warren. It was cool. No, no. You don't get to do much with the, with the big leads. It's just all so piecemeal. You know, you do your little bit, and then they put it all together, and it looks like you're hanging out with everybody, but you're really not. You know? Any more questions? Ooh. You know, I told somebody the story already, but uh, day one of the of the zombies uh, of, the, of the show, we, you know, I made it a point to not cut my hair, not trim my beard, because I thought, look, it's the apocalypse. You, you don't have. Where are you going to go to the barber? No. So I just just let myself go, you know, for a month or two before we even started shooting. And so the, the, one of the first scenes was with these little kids that were zombies on the school bus. I don't know if everybody remembers that. First oh episode. yeah, yeah, bus. of course. Well, we were we we're doing a break, and one of the little kids, I'm mean, about seven years old, came up to me and Addie, you know, Addie with the purple hair, beautiful, uh -huh. gorgeous, and he looks up at Addie and says, "You know, you don't look like you would be in the apocalypse." And he looks to me and says, "You do." <laughs> I said, "Yes." I mean, you know, where are you gonna go? Where you, where'd you go to the beauty shop? Where, it's the apocalypse. Come on, you know. But the, the girls in the show really liked being pretty. They wanted to. They wanted to stay pretty, and I, I just thought that was not natural. It didn't seem natural to me. And then Murphy wanted to be pretty too. So <laughs> Murphy wasn't natural. <laughs> well, that's good. There's a question over here to our right. Hey. So uh, at the end of season five, last scene shows Murphy, and he says. That's it, as he's eating the brand. Do you yeah. think he's, in your opinion, knowing his character, do you think he was thinking, oh, I have a way to cure everybody, or I have the next way to make this make money for me? You know? Wow, or, that's great. My advantage? You know, probably the second. Probably, oh, that's what I can do to milk this for all it's worth. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but whatever it was, it made sense to him. And, you know, people, people thought season five was a downer for everybody. And, and um, I don't know, it kind, of, it kind of was a downer for me, you know, because I didn't think we really got much closure. And um, I was really hoping for a season six. But there were some other episodes, like in, I don't know, was it three or four, like like Doc Stoned History? That was a, that was a great episode, I loved that one. 
and, and oh, yeah. um, the, the, the insane asylum with Nurse Ratchet and 10 Ks foaming at the mouth and that Doc flew over the cuckoo's nest. That was my favorite episode. It's because I didn't have any divas to deal with. It was just me, you know? I, they left, I guess they were running out of money, so let's just do an episode with Doc. We don't have to pay these other people, you know? <laughs> so they gave me like my own episode. It was super cool. Uh, what was your uh, favorite zombie kill? Zombie what? Zombie kill out of the show. Uh, there was the there was the episode with the uh, Lincoln lookalikes. It was it was a yeah. Abraham Lincoln lookalike contest, and the bus was a busload of Lincoln lookalikes. And I had a oh bat, yeah, and I, I just that was it was like the opening of the episode too. Um, yeah. And then there was like tossing the baby around because you know we were trying to protect the baby, baby Lucy. Right. <laughs> so it was like hot potato with the baby, you know, while we killed. That was a great that was a great one. But there were so many. But that would probably be my favorite the okay. Lincoln's. Yep. I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't maybe want to. Yeah, just go to the light, man. See what's, out, see what's, see what's next. <laughs> see, what's, see what's out there. The, the big mystery, you know? I don't know. I, I do okay. I think I do okay. So we went on our left and we went on our right. Yep. So after starting the new watch, you know, I typically don't want to watch myself act because it's just like, ew, why would I do that? I know people love to watch themselves, but I just don't. But I did watch the show because I want to see the special effects that happen that, happened, that you, don't, you don't see as an actor. Like, I don't know if anybody remembers the Back to the Future episode where we're in the mm -hmm. DeLorean. And, you know, when we get out of the hatch, I'm like, hey, there should be smoke. Where's the fog machine? Well, oh, sorry, we don't have time. Moving on, moving on. But... But then when I saw it, I wanted to see what they did, and they ended up putting it in post. You know, they, they can digitally add the fog, and, and you know, you'll go pike a zombie, but you don't see the blood flying out the other end, you know? So I would tune in, because I would want to see what the special effects did with, you know, with your acting, how they made how they made it look cool, you know? Adding all the sound effects and the blood and all that, you know? It's cool. Listen. What? Hey. Who was the most cut on the set? Who was the most fun? Yeah. Me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was pretty fun. Uh, you know, me and Murphy had a great time. He was a real funny guy. We're, you know, we're both theater actors, so we're cut from the same cloth, really. And so we just bonded immediately. And we were, we were pals. So it was really cool to, um, you know, at the first read-through, and the first time I met Keith, I saw that he was kind of playing snarky, you know? And I thought I, I, thought I was going to be the snarky old guy. So I'm like, oh man, we can't both be playing snarky because that's there's no contrast. That's not gonna be good for the show to have two guys playing that same kind of energy. So I just started playing more sympathetic to his plight, you know. Um, and it all started in that first um, card game in the car where we're stuck in the car playing cards. Um, he was all afraid and scared, and I'm like, come down, don't relax, you know. And we just, I started just playing a different energy, and that's really, I think, helped cause the the chemistry that we had between the two of us. And, you know, Keith is very much like that in real life, anyway. And I'm kind of a lot like Doc, too, you know? I know the, the, the showrunner, Carl Schaefer, who created the show, he told me early on, he said, no matter who, whatever actor you cast in whatever part, the, the role over time kind of ends up morphing into kind of who the person really is in real life. No matter what you want to do to try to change him, you, you kind of end up being who you are. Which is really true, I found, because Murphy was very much like Keith. Warren was just like Kalita. You know, uh, 10K was very quiet and, and you know to himself, just like 10, you know, um, just like Nat. Nat is very much like that, I should say, like 10K. So it was very interesting because you don't get to develop a character like doing theater, even a movie. You don't have that long period to develop, you know, and have them write for you once they get to know you. The writers will start to write for you because they know what your personality is like, you know? So it really, it was really cool, really an opportunity of a lifetime to get to create a role over time like that, you know? Because on the, on the page, day one, Doc was supposed to be a high-end drug dealer. High-end drug dealer in his 50s um, with, a, with a strong stomach for gore. I think that was all that was written about the guy. 
and I just turned him into this kind of old hippie, <laughs> you know, just because I just, I do stop cutting my hair and, you know, you go in to get your wardrobe and they ask you, well, what do you think? What do you think for your character? Well, what do you think you would wear? I'm like, you know, maybe some suspenders, maybe some, I don't know, high top converse or, you know, I had an, kind of an idea of what I would like to look like and, and you just kind of have all this input and they take it and you just morph into this character. Really cool. That never happens. <laughs> Yes? Uh, do you think that there's a possibility that they'd be able to sell the idea of a Z Nation movie to like yeah. Netflix or Apple? I think that's more likely than, than not because, you know, especially after COVID, a lot of, we had a lot of new fans, people that never watched the show uh, until they got stuck at home having to watch TV, you know? <laughs> so we, we've got a lot of a resurgence of, of fans. I, though There won't be a season six, I can tell you that, but, but there more than likely will be a Z Nation movie down the road, I would think. Maybe a kind of a reunion, maybe a reunion movie or something. It'd be stupid not to do it, you know? We just have too many hardcore fans that really want it, you know? That would, my guess, would be a movie. I can't remember what episode, but you guys are all locked up and then you get fed by your captors in dog food. <laughs> puppy chow. Did they actually make you eat dog food? It was, it was Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> it was supposed to, yeah, it was supposed to be Puppy Chow. And 10K was loving it. Oh, Puppy Chow, I love it. Yeah, no, it was Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> you guys were talking like, oh, I love the stuff with the make your own gravy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> gravy train, yeah. No, that was, that, they didn't make us eat dog, dog food. They'd have to pay me a whole lot more for that. <laughs> now, I'm aware that you would prefer to be on a TV series and get yourself some work that way. But can yeah. you tell us about some of the two movies that are coming out this year that you've been in oh. where people can catch you in film? Oh, God, you know, I'm getting these little bitty parts. Well, my friend from C Nation, he was one of the um, coordinators. One of the, He was the stunt guy that put himself on fire and he wrote a movie called The Stairs and really wanted me to be in the movie but he didn't really have a part for me but he gave me this kind of a silly part but it turned out to be a, a pretty cool horror show it's about this little kid who finds this, this staircase in the middle of the woods and he gets lost and lost in time sort of and it, it's uh, gotten pretty popular and he's actually um, doing some comic cons himself uh, uh, promoting the movie it's called The Stairs. And then I'm getting ready to shoot a movie called Zombie Geddon, which is hard to believe that that hasn't already been made. I mean, come on, Zombie Geddon, really? That's just now happening? So I, I play a bartender named Mike, and I have a small part in that. But you know, I want a spinoff, you know? I kinda want a spinoff. I, I want more to do than just a little day player bit part, you know? <laughs> Doc flew over the, Doc flew over the cookers. What's another one? Uh, be better, better ass Doc. You know, better call Doc. I had a couple names, for, potential names for spinoffs for Doc. Doug, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, don't be cool. Anyway, I think when you were here two years ago, you were trying to like sell Doc attending Comic Con or something. It was one of your ideas that you had that you were floating around or something? Uh, oh, oh yeah. I wanted to do like a like a documentary. You know how like the guy from The Walking Dead was on his motorcycle. What's that guy's name? Uh, yeah, Norman Reedus. And he did that, you know, that kind of show where he's on his motorcycle. Well, I thought it'd be cool if Doc was in a, a Volkswagen van, you know, <laughs> and he's going around, he's hitting the pot shops on the way, talking about seaweed, and he gets to the Comic-Con and he's interviewing zombie fans, you know, to find out what they like about the show. And I thought that would really be a great idea for a, kind of a, a way to utilize the character and, and tap into the whole Comic-Con scene and the, and the you know, and, and the marijuana scene, and that was, I thought that was a great idea. Nobody took me up on it. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was a cool idea. I should go back to that. I try, try to talk to Carl about it, but you know, everybody's off doing their own thing. Now they're doing Black Summer. I don't know if anybody's watching Black oh, Summer. I've they, seen they it. It's so scary, man. Yeah. That's scary shit. I mean, I was like, this is too much like reality, man. This is, where's the cheese wheel? Where's the scene? We, I mean, you know, it was too scary for me. I can, I can barely get through the first episode. Hey, I wanna, oh, first off, I want to thank you for your service as a fellow veteran. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you and, for that. Uh, uh, but I was going to mention that the what I really appreciated about Sea Nation 
was the sense of humor, the comedy of it, you know, just a, a slapstick. Um, and in marked contrast to Black Summer, when I saw that in the first season, I said, oh man, this stuff is, this is out there. This is like too grounded in reality because it's showing yeah. how, how people act in the ship's book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or yeah. you guys, you know, I, I just really, every week I tuned in and just love that. Thanks. We tried to What's put the fun happen? back in the apocalypse. Exactly. <laughs> Didn't all have to be gloom and doom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I really appreciate it. And it's it's cool that you know with Z Nation, you know, Black Summer is like day one of right. the apocalypse, and we're like three years in. Right. So these are the people that survived. They're, so they're not all frantic, and you know they figured out how to deal with it. Who you know they they found their tribe and they're getting through it. So it kind of started on a whole new vibe to begin with, you know. I think it was a great idea for a show, and yeah. people ask me, are you going to be on Black Summer? I'm like, yeah, I doubt it. Yeah. They'll probably make me want to cut my hair and beard like <laughs> Doc before, you know. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, believe me, if they asked me to be on Black Summer, I would say, oh, hell yes, where, where do I sign, you know. <laughs> but it's scary, that's a scary show. Yeah. But if you're a serious zombie fan, you'll, you know, you'll probably be into it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> They're filming that in uh, Canada right now. There's a question that's under here. Yep. You've been in shows keeping the Walking Dead or Z Nation. Z Nation. Yeah. Even yeah, though I would sure. probably get paid way more to be in The Walking Dead. <laughs> but you know, I like that our show has a complete beginning and end, and the, the episode is a complete little thing. It's like we're not milking it for, I don't know, a season for this one plot line going on and on, and you're just, what? When are you ever going to get to the end of that plot line? Ours is all tied up in a nice little bow at the end, you know? We're right off into the sunset, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I, I had a great time on Sea Nation. Just, you know, I'd say dream come true, but I never even dreamed that I would ever do it. So, just crazy, you know? Really fun. And doing Comic Cons, I had no idea that that was, I didn't even know what a Comic Con was. And I'm like, hold on, what did we, we get to go to a, we get to go where the fans are, and they get to come over, and you get to meet them, and like, yeah, you get to do that. I'm like, cool, bonus, <laughs> you know, really cool. And I'm still doing comic cons. That's crazy, you know. After all this time, I thought, you know, I'm not relevant. <laughs> anyway, it's very cool. I'm so glad you guys are here. Was there a question over here, off to the left? I heard. Yep. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Who's watching my booth? I thought you were watching my booth. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, you wanted to make Oh, that's right, that's right. Well, it just means a lot, you know. Our, it's funny, you know, we, we come to these Comic Cons and, and some of these other characters are so popular. I'm sitting next to Bonnie, I mean, she's got a line. It's so hard not to feel like, um, you know, like the redhead stepchild, you know, of the Comic Con. She's got a line going out the door. But, you know, our fans are so enthusiastic and so loving and so excited when we show up at the Comic Con that it just makes it worthwhile, you know, because it just means so much to maybe a lot fewer people, but it's, it's still really great, you know. Hey. What was, uh, what was your first Comic Con? I couldn't even tell you. It might have been Crypticon here somewhere, or I don't know. I forget. Which one? Yeah, I think so. That might have been that might have been my first one. And Ronnie interviewed me. That yeah, I think so. That, might, that could have been it. The wind is howling. Is that like just is that the wind or is that an animal? It's the wind. Kind of. Well, here's the. Well, I did do kind of a Hallmark movie recently called Maysville, but you know you don't promote the Hallmark movie at the Comic Con because these people want blood and guts. You know, I mean, you got to talk about your horror, or they're not interested in you. <laughs> But you're going to end up seeing this movie, Maysville. It's a period piece. And I think I play like the owner of the mill. I forget his name, but it's a lovely part. And he's a lovely guy and all that. It's actually the mother. Remember uh, 5K? Anybody remember 5K, the little kid? Yeah, yeah. His mom wrote the movie. 
And she loved me and loved my relationship with 10K, and I was really sweet with her son, who was a really cool, wonderful little actor. And so she wrote this part for me in her movie, and so I did it, and we shot in Chehalis. So that should come out pretty soon. But, you know, the thing is, when I do a lot of indie films, independent films, and in order to get your film seen and um, sold, you gotta go horror, because that's gonna sell. These other kind of genres aren't, you know, aren't gonna sell like a horror uh, film would sell. And it's unfortunate, but that's kind of the way it goes. So that's why I end up doing a lot of scary stuff. What's that again? <laughs> not, not. Yeah, right. It doesn't like, I know, I know. It just doesn't work that way. I did manage to get an LA agent, which was very cool, because I never, to get an LA agent as an actor is like near impossible. But I figured, now I'm on a television series, I should be able to get an LA agent. It was still really hard, but I finally got one, because I knew somebody that was represented by the same agency, and I had to jump through all kind of hoops. But I got an LA agent, so now I get to audition for, for cool stuff, you know, like legitimate stuff that's going on in LA. Um, so that's been cool, but you know now I'm a big now it's a bigger pond. You know you're auditioning with all the other you know guys that look like me in LA, so it's harder. So it feels like the work that I end up getting is is because I know.